This is a little story about a local allotment in Biddeford, Devon, the Trix allotment, and about how local government officials act in a high-handed and irresponsible manner against people that they pick on for some reason. Let's go and have a look at the allotment. About three months ago, maybe a bit more, I was offered an allotment here, allotment number seven. This is Christopher Busby, Dr. Christopher Busby. I was once the Green Party Shadow Minister for Science and Technology. And I'm interested, and was interested, in sustainability. And that includes sustainable agriculture. And one of the key stones of, of theory in terms of sustainable agriculture is a system called permaculture and I'm going to argue here that what is being done mostly here is not permaculture but is a sort of reflection of the ways in which agriculture is slowly destroying the planet. Let's go and have a look. This is Lucinda Appleby, who is my lodger, and she's been working on this allotment that we were given, and she's been trying to do permaculture on it. She has a big book on permaculture by the famous permaculture inventor Bill Mollison, and we'll talk about that later on. But we're now walking up towards allotment number seven, which was the one that was given to me. Behind that allotment is allotment number six, this one that you can see here. All of the corn stalks have come down and it all looks pretty desperate. But at the time when it was being grown, as you can see, it was covered entirely in black plastic. And the gentleman who has this allotment, in fact has four allotments here I believe, or maybe three now, he believes in the sort of agriculture that's destroying the planet. He believes in fertilizer, weed killer, chemicals, and yield. So what we get is yield, but goodness knows what's in the plants that are being yielded, that people have to eat since just about everything has gone into the ground here in terms of chemicals and pesticides and all sorts of other horrible things. Strangely enough he doesn't seem to actually carry out any um, eating of the berries and the fruits. I mean there's a tree there completely full of apples and here's a tree with pears and here's an example of the methodology that he uses. So the, the ground is covered in black plastic. As you can see, the plastic is falling to bits here. Little bits of plastic are flying everywhere. And probably also into the produce. So people who eat this produce are going to eat plastic. And recent scientific research has associated that with these, these plastics in the gut with colon cancer and a whole range of, of diseases. Now, this is allotment number seven here. Look at that, that's a nice big rhubarb plant that we've been taking rhubarb four from and eating. This year already. Yeah, we had poor lots this year and we've got raspberries and <clears throat> the idea of permaculture as I understand it, and listen, I'm no expert here. In fact neither of us are, although although Lucinda here has done a lot more studying than I have of the issue. The idea is to try and work with nature rather than against nature. And that's what we've been doing, or she's been doing mainly, because I, I've been otherwise engaged in all my nuclear research and so forth. But what we have here is what they would call an overgrown allotment, but what we call a permaculture allotment. We've had these little fruit trees. Do you see these little fruit trees here? Now those fruit trees were planted here in order to act as supports. There's the strings you can see there pulling them into certain shapes 
to act as supports for other 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 plants that have been grown here. We grew peas. Tell us tell us what what we grew. We grew we grew peas and. Uh, well, we did grow peas. This potatoes. year I haven't been able to do as much on the garden as I would have liked to because it was already in quite an overgrown and untidy state. There were lots of good things here, however, which I didn't want to disturb until autumn time when they go to sleep. If I had disturbed them earlier in the year, they would all have died or not done very well at all. I did move the raspberry canes because I wanted to keep my yellow flowers, these, in my half because the gentleman over here really doesn't like the yellow flowers. So that was an effort to try to contain things with what I had to hand. I haven't got any money to put in lots of uh, expensive gadgets and I didn't have much money to buy seeds. But also I hadn't got uh, the strength or time to really go to town on this allotment. So I did what I could do with the things I had around me. The little tiny trees, as you can see, I intended to let them shade the other plants that I would grow and for things to grow up them, just as the bean poles across the way there that you can see. Many bean poles, much bigger and taking up a lot more room and light and air than my little trees. Um, so eventually if they grew larger I would thin them out, give one away. It's very easy to manage a garden plot if you're um, on hand. Anyway. Peas. Sorry, yeah. Peas, mostly onions. Yeah. Put in some potatoes. They haven't done at all very well because of the weather. What has done very well here are um, insects and s slow worms and frogs and animals and grasshoppers. They love it here. <clears throat> and here's some. Uh, wood chips that we have been using to keep to keep the thing uh, no, I, ordered. No, I was, I was stopped from using the wood chip. Initially I came in with a plan to just maintain the ground as it was because we were told we weren't starting properly until September so I thought I could suppress some of the weeds using wood chip. Then I was asked to stop using wood chip therefore the weeds have just done what they like. Um... Anyway, it's a nice place to be and it's a nice garden to come and sit in and commune with nature. So we will now talk a bit about what happened. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, well what happened was truly extraordinary. Truly extraordinary. I got a letter from the council saying that we weren't allowed to put in all these fruit trays. We could, we could have six, but at that time there were 13. So anyway, um, I wrote back and said, OK, we can remove the fruit trees, but not now. We'd like to keep them for a bit, you know, because they've only just gone in. You know, little fruit trees, they, they have to be put in the ground and watered and so on, you know, so that the roots can take otherwise they die. We can't just pull them out and take them away and put them in a pot. So I wrote that to the council and they refused, they didn't reply. They just did not reply. And the other thing that they said, and this is a man called Richard Coombs, who's some sort of uh, deputy town clerk. As far as I know, knows nothing at all about, about allotments or about agriculture. At least he doesn't seem to know anything. And he also wrote to say that we were using uh, <coughs> wood chips like this, contrary to, to some regulation or another. And uh, he said that the wood chips take nitrogen out of the ground. Anyway, I looked on the internet and wood chips don't take nitrogen out of the ground. It's just a fallacy. Nevertheless, we, we removed the wood chips and uh, we didn't hear back about the trees. Um, I also said that I would do some experiments. I bought some equipment for measuring nitrogen in the soil and I wrote and said, look, I'll, let's just have a, have a go and see whether it does take nitrogen out of the soil. We can look at, look at allotments where it's been there, we can do an experiment and so forth. Anyway, I didn't get any reply. Next thing was, um, and, and incidentally, I've written to him seven times, <laughs> okay, and I've received no reply. And Lucinda here, <coughs> who has also applied for an allotment and hasn't been given one over the same period for some reason. <coughs> there are plenty of empty allotments here. Um, he didn't reply to, to, to any of these letters. Um, 
So, what's going on? What's going on? So the next thing I heard was that we were going to be thrown off the allotment. That was some time ago, um, about a month ago, I think. And then I wrote back and I said, look, you know, we, why, why are we being thrown off the allotment? You know, you're not allowed to do this. You haven't had a proper allotment committee meeting. There's never been a proper allotment committee meeting. The, the woman who he told me to contact, who is now the chair of the allotment committee in, in the council, uh, a woman called Jessie Garb, apparently it turns out that she's a DJ and knows very little about allotments. So how is it she came to be chair of the allotment committee? Anyway, he told me between him and her, they decided that we were scurrilous and our, and our allotment was a disgrace or whatever, and then we were going to be thrown off and there was nothing we could do about it. Nothing at all. Well, we're now going to do something about it. And that's why I'm doing this video. Because this is part of a more general problem. The more general problem is the... Uh, Assumption by town officials, the executive, if you like to call it that, as opposed to the the democratic, um, democratically elected councillors, the people who who actually do the do do the work, the executive, like the town clerk and the deputy town clerk and the deputy deputy town clerk and all these people, they can do as they please. They can absolutely do as they please, and nobody even knows that they're doing it. Well, I'm going to draw attention to the fact that they sh that, that they they are not allowed to do this. They have to they have to have some kind of democratic accountability, and they don't have any democratic accountability. This is not only for allotments, incident. This is about all sorts of things. I mean, recently, we've heard. Yes, I'm a member of the Green Party, and we went to a Green Party meeting yesterday. We heard that they're selling all the land. Opposite, opposite Biddeford on the Easter Water side for nothing, for some development or another. And the can and the the, the, the district council um, didn't even know. The district councillor and the mayor of Biddeford did not even know who had signed the agreement. The first that they heard about the agreement was it was in the newspaper. So what we see is a sort of takeover of ordinary people and their lives by unelected officials. And this is a good example of it, and it's going to stop here. Because the first thing is that the law doesn't allow them to do this. You have to have a proper notice to, to, to quit an allotment. There has to, be an, has to be at least three months or six months or some reasonable length of time. There are laws about allotments. Allotments are for poor people. They're for poor people who don't have gardens, who were driven off their gardens during the time of all, all of the building in, in the 1920s, people who, had, who, who were allowed to go and grow their own food because they didn't have any gardens, poor people. And also in the Allotments Act it said they can use these allotments as gardens, right? They don't have to have serried rows of, of produce. They don't have to use agricultural methodology. They don't have to put all sorts of chemicals on, 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 on their allotments. They can just sit there and enjoy the garden aspect of the allotment. That is the law. That is the allotment law. And so we cannot be thrown off this allotment just by some unelected official deciding, ipse dixit, he is going to do it. So we're not going to leave. We're going to sit out here and he can bring the police in or take us to court or whatever and we can just investigate this whole issue of the administration of allotments by people who are unelected. Right. So that's my message to Richard Coombs, who is the deputy deputy town clerk or whatever he is. He's in for some trouble. <laughs> Thank you for listening.